So Blackmagic Design has released the beta for DaVinci Resolve 17, and it might have just redeemed all of 2020. It honestly feels like not just the most complete version of DaVinci Resolve, but the most complete NLE I think I've ever used. What is up? I'm Marcel, and welcome back to Modern Filmmaker. In this video, I'm gonna go through my top 10 favorite features of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I don't know what's going on over there at Blackmagic Design, but between the 6K, the 12K, and now DaVinci Resolve 17, it, it really feels like they're trying to take over. And I think they just might succeed in pretty much every section and definitely every tab, there's something new to find. And not just stuff that's helpful, but extremely game-changing. I've been using it for the last few days, and I can say that DaVinci Resolve finally feels complete. And that's really all I've wanted. So let's dive into the program, and I'll show you guys what I'm so excited about. So in the edit tab, there's somewhat of a redesign. And the first thing that caught my eye, I think was the inspector in the top right. Um, it not only had some icons that were new, but it also had some properties that were new that we can actually mess with for the clip. Um, the first one I noticed was the smart reframe, which is really cool, especially when you shoot uh, like real estate videos like this one here on the video, uh, you'll see that the lines are everything. And so you wanna be, you want your camera level and sometimes you have to punch in and do a little reframing. And it's cool to see that right here, in the property of every single clip, you can just click auto reframe and it'll hopefully do a pretty good job of lining up your clips for you. And you can kind of work faster and faster, which is really, really sick. And then also speed change, which in the past, you usually right click a clip and then go to uh, change clip speed, or you go into the retime and curves properties. But I love that right here from the properties in the inspector, you can change the speed because I'm changing the speed all the time, um, whether I'm speed ramping or really just using a lot of slow-mo because we all love some slow-mo with B-roll. Uh, it's so nice to know that I can jump over here to the change speed or speed change section of the inspector and change that. Cause even very often, like with this clip in particular, this clip is actually shot in 29.9 frames a second, but I like to um, slow these clips down when nothing's moving in the frame. And then I can come down to retime and scaling and go to optical flow to still get that very smooth slow motion type look. Even though I shot this in completely regular 30 frames a second, um, I can slow this down to 65% and it still looks really good. So a lot of the time when I shoot a real estate video like this, I'll shoot in the highest quality I can shooting in full 29.9 or 30 frames a second. And then afterwards, I'll actually just slow it down a little bit to make it a little smoother, a little slower and a little more stable. So for me, it's really helpful to have uh, that option so ready right there. Um, so next time I shoot a house, I can come in here and quickly reframe, change speed, retime, boom, onto the next clip. Um, and then also in the inspector, you'll notice in the past, uh, if you didn't have an effect on the clip, then there would be no option to go into the effects. But now you kind of see that you have these different options at the top. And if I had audio on this clip, I could go into the audio properties and the mixing, uh, the EQ and the leveling of that with the audio tab. Or if I add any kind of effect on here, like this glow, I can actually, you'll see that the effect uh, icon just opened up for me to be able to click on it. And now under open effects, I have my glow properties. So I could make this glow a little bit and then let's say uh, another really cool feature that I'm going to throw in here is the fusion effects. Uh, if we come up here to the fusion effects and then I come down to, let's say video call, which may not make sense in this particular case, but it looks pretty cool. Um, now under the fusion tab, I can actually affect those properties, uh, which I love that because it keeps it kind of uncluttered. Um, one thing is if, if it just stacked all the effects under open effects, then you kind of end up with this, you could end up with this long laundry list of effects that you don't really need. Um, so I love that they kind of kept that separate, they kept it tight, they kept it organized. And now I kind of have the fusion stuff over here and I can affect that. And there seems to be quite a bit of properties here to affect even, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Um, some of the new stuff they implemented is really, really sick. And so the inspector was kind of one of the first things that caught my eye that I was like, I like this. Because having options that you can quickly get to is such a time saver. And you can tell that they really thought about the editors and creators uh, when looking at this new inspector. So this next one is probably my favorite new feature. And I'm not even really sure how Blackmagic managed to pull this off. But when you're in the effects library, uh, under any uh, video transition title, um, a generator, effects, open effects, it doesn't even matter. You can actually scroll over any of the effects and it'll show you a live preview with the clip 
that your cursor in the timeline is already over. So if I uh, go over here and just go over the CCTV, it'll give me the live effect. And it's not just giving me a thumbnail of the clip and playing the effect over a thumbnail. It's actually playing the effect over the played video. So I'm, again, I'm not sure how this wizardry was pulled off because, I mean, in the past, you'd pretty much, let's say you drag something in and you add it to the clip. You can go to the effects and you see it here. And now we're playing this game of how long do I have to wait before this smart caches and I can play it smoothly, which is really, really crazy that even still, now you're still in the timeline, you still have to wait for it to cache to play it back smoothly with a lot of these more in-depth effects. But over here in the actual effects library, you can actually view these seamlessly. And I'm not sure how this happened, but uh, again, you cannot just do this with the effects, but you can also do this with any of the titles, which there are some new titles in here that look pretty cool. And you actually get a chance to see how they come on and off the screen. And this is something that kind of always got under my skin with the modern titles V1 and the modern thirds title packs you can get at themodernfilmmaker.com now. You would have to kind of go through each one and let's say drag it onto the timeline and then actually take a look at it, wait for it to cache so you could watch it play back and then go to the next one. But now we finally have live previews of every title. And so if you come down to the modern titles or the modern thirds, which you can get now at themodernfilmmaker.com, uh, you can actually scroll through here and see how they animate on and off the screen fully, which is a really, really huge deal, um, which will save you and I know me a ton of time. Uh, and I love that and I can't get enough of it. It's actually the first time that I've actually gone through every effect and every transition in Resolve just because I can. I can actually go up here to transitions with my cursor on this clip and then come through here and see how it would transition out of this clip into the next one, which is amazing and such an unbelievable time saver. If I go up here to the non-additive, which is a really cool transition and really popular, like usually you're going through, you're throwing these things on a clip. You're like, how does that look? Ah, do I like it? I don't like it. You throw another one on, ah, do I like it? I don't like it. You throw another one on, ah, do I like it? it's all day long. But now you can just go through here and seamlessly Maybe not seamlessly, maybe there's a little stutter, but you can definitely get a look at this enough to tell if you're gonna like it. And it's the little things like this that really kind of take this program to a whole nother level. So let's get into some more features. So there are several new features in just the color tab alone that we've got to go over. Uh, probably my favorite being the high dynamic range color wheels. It's a lot like the log color wheels, but with even more control. And if we take a look at them here, you can see that it looks a good bit different. And we actually have six different color wheels, uh, six different spectrums to affect uh, with this tool, which is amazing. And you can see on the lower end, it starts with black, dark, and shadows. That's kind of like just our shadow spectrum, but it's broken up our shadow spectrum into three different controls. And you can see with the black, um, if I do anything to the black, it's actually not gonna do anything. And that's because if I hit this button to the left of where it says black, it'll actually show me what spectrum this is covering and it's not covering anything because I don't have anything in my image that's actually that dark. If I go into the parades or the waveforms, you can see that this actually doesn't even really hit the black to be there. But if I raise this little dial to the left up to let's say minus 1.5, then click this again, you'll see that we actually have selected a certain spectrum of the image. And now if I change the black, you can see that blue is kind of being pushed into that one little section that we have selected, which is pretty amazing. This is pretty amazing, uh, especially for us colorists. The amount of control that this provides is really unparalleled because moving up to the dark, you have the same thing. If I click on the dark, I can raise this up to whatever spectrum I please and it'll select that and then I can change just that spectrum of color. And again, with the shadows, same thing. And then if I move my way up uh, in these dials, you can see that we have, from there we have uh, light, highlights, and then specular. And you can do the same thing with those. You can click those and see exactly which spectrum those are highlighting. So we can see here that our specular is not even in the zone that we're in. We have to start in the highlights to kind of affect just this window over here. So I can pump a little bit of warmth into that window, maybe come down to the light, pump a little bit of cool into the light, just a smidgen of cool which is a little odd, but I'm doing it. 
and then come down here to, let's say the shadows, which are now almost more like the midtones than they are the shadows. And I can push these shadows a little to the warm, just slightly, and then the dark I can pull down to the blue and push this up to kind of even that out to get a little bit of a dramatic look. And if I deactivate, you can see that we've added a lot of style just with these HDR uh, color wheels. And then the next thing I wanted to touch on, which is another color effect, is the new color warper, which can do a lot of what we just did, which is really surprising. So if I add a, uh, if I add a node after the LUT by pressing Alt-S, now I can actually hover over the image and it will show me on the color warper by this uh, little red indicator arrow that uh, which part of the overall color spectrum I would be affecting. So let's say I wanted to get her skin a little bit more popping into the orange spectrum. Uh, I could actually take some of the greens and the yellows and I can actually push these up towards the red and the orange. And I can actually do the same thing with these reds, pushing them a little towards the orange as well. And uh, in the middle here, we have a lack of luminance or a lack of saturation, sorry. And in the outside, we have full saturation. So even by pulling these oranges and greens up in this, uh, this more red section here, you'll see that her skin starts to have more saturation and also starts to get pushed a little from the greens up into more of a yellow orange kind of glow. And then from there, I'm actually gonna turn on the vector scope so we can see something that's really cool here. And then from there, I can come down to these greens and push them towards the blue. And then this teal towards the blue a little bit and these purples, I can pull these down towards the blue and the blue I can pull down towards the teal. And now we have this teal and orange almost, uh, it's definitely not perfect, but it's definitely a very fast way. If you get to know this tool, it can be a very fast way to sh kind of nudge your colors into the color contrast that you wanna get, whether it may be yellow and blue or green and purple, you can really see it and visualize it there. So it doesn't become this weird uh, kind of dance with the color wheels. It just becomes this little nudge of where you kind of push the colors to exactly where you need them. And I can even use a little more red in her lips. So I'm gonna pull this red back up and back where it's kind of used to being. And now if I deactivate this node, activate, you can see we've added a lot of color and style just with this color warper. Now, I, I'm not sure if this is exactly what the color warper was made for. Um, and I'm sure there's an endless amount of things you can use the color warper for. So down in the comment section down below, let me know some of your favorite new features of DaVinci Resolve 17 and what you're using some of this stuff for. So one thing they showed in the DaVinci Resolve 17 announcement is the magic mask, which looks pretty incredible. I can't say I've actually used this mask yet, uh, but you guys know how much color grading I do on this channel and how much masking I do. And I usually always tell you guys, mask all you can, mask and mask and mask. That way, the more you practice, the faster you'll be. And the next time you need a mask, you won't be worried about it. You'll just get it done real quick and keep moving on but it looks like they've kind of taken those steps out and, and they've implemented something here that hopefully, I don't know how well it works now, but hopefully it will eliminate a lot of the time we spend masking. Another thing I wanted to touch on was the collaborative workflow. Now, this is only for the DaVinci Resolve Studio users right now, but they say in the future, it'll also be open to the DaVinci Resolve free users. And pretty much they showed in their presentation that if I'm coloring in the color tab, I could have a coworker of mine or somebody I'm working with on a project in the edit tab simultaneously from their machines. They could even come over to the color tab and see what I'm doing. They couldn't make any changes until I leave the color tab, just like I couldn't make any changes in the edit tab until they leave the edit tab. But I thought it was really cool, uh, just the fact that I could see what somebody else is doing on a project. They could see what I'm doing. And not only that, but think about this. So typically right now, an editor will edit a video. Let's say they send it to me for color grading. I've got to go through my color grading hours and then maybe I'll send it to a guy to finish and to mix the audio or, or whatever. Maybe I'll finish it from there. But still there's that time spent from one guy finishes his job and the next guy's got to finish his job. So it's just these different stages that video production always kind of has to go through. When you have good collaborative workflow like they speak about in the presentation, 
you'll find that you could have one editor working on something and as he's laying clips down, I could be coloring them as he's laying them down, kind of eliminating the fact that he's gonna spend his own eight hours and I'm gonna have to spend another eight hours. We could spend the same eight hours together, um, kind of making progress on the same project. And to me, that's a huge time saver and that cuts down on the amount of hours it takes for a production house to even get something out to a client, which is a big, big deal. So this one's a little on the nerdy side, keyboard shortcuts. I mean, come on, if you're a real editor, if you're a real, you know, weekend warrior, you know about the keyboard shortcuts because you're trying to work as fast as you can so you can finally have a weekend or a day off for God's sakes. But if you go up here to preferences um, or the DaVinci Resolve and then down to keyboard customization, you can pretty much customize your home keyboard to be just like the editor keyboard or any way you want your keyboard to be, really. And also, over here under the DaVinci Resolve drop down to the right, you'll see that they have presets for Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Avid, and Pro Tools. So pretty much no matter what other professional NLE or audio program you're coming from, uh, you can feel at home in DaVinci Resolve with the keyboard shortcuts. So next, I want to jump into the Fairlight tab, mainly for the Dolby implementations. Now, we've been able to do surround sound stuff before, but it looks like this time Blackmagic has taken things to a whole nother level and you're able to import Dolby Masters. Or if you just have a bunch of clips that you want to turn into a surround sound environment, you can actually just select those and turn them into one track that acts as a surround sound environment, which is pretty insane. And if you're doing any sound design, any animation uh, sound design, any Foley, I mean, this is a huge, huge deal, especially for me. I kind of come from the audio world. I come from Pro Tools, Ableton, Cubase, and to know that uh, I can actually bring my tracks in here. I can bring stems from a score in here and actually do 3D or uh, Dolby surround sound type stuff with my music along to my videos, that could be pretty cool. That could be pretty next level, and I look forward to digging into that. So last but not least is the new Blackmagic Speed Editor, and this thing looks quick. This thing looks like it's gonna speed up a lot of, of my personal workflow. Uh, I do a kid's show that's over 20 minutes every week, and something like this could really change everything. Uh, they even showed at one point that you can lay down random clips. If there's one button and it'll actually choose random clips in a timeline synced up in a multicam, which clips to go to and kind of lay them out for you, almost editing the video randomly for you, which is really, really cool. I don't know why they would show us that because now we're gonna get really lazy, but the speed editor keyboard just looks really sick. And I noticed something. So they're saying when you order a physical copy of DaVinci Resolve, like if they send you the thumb drive or the activation key, they say they're also shipping out the speed editor with it for free. But they say if you download DaVinci Resolve uh, from an online resource um, and buy it that way as an online download, they're not shipping out the keyboard. But when I pre-ordered my speed editor today, because I had to, uh, I saw that they're actually shipping out free DaVinci Resolve Studio with the editor. So if you get DaVinci Resolve shipped to you, they'll ship the keyboard. If you don't get it shipped, they won't ship the keyboard. If you get the keyboard shipped, they'll send you Resolve. The keyboard's $2.95. Resolve's $2.95. You might as well just order the keyboard and get the free Resolve. So if you have any friends, let them know, order the keyboard. Don't get Resolve because you could get the keyboard or not get the keyboard. Make sure to get the keyboard and you'll definitely get resolved. So if you guys like this video, definitely make sure to go down there and give this video a like. It'll really help the channel out. And if you don't like the video, give the video a like anyway. I would appreciate it. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely in the comment section down below. Let me know which one of these features you guys want me to dive more into in a future tutorial, uh, and I will get on that right away. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always making videos on DaVinci Resolve, and we got a new version ahead of us, and I'm ready to bring you guys some new tricks in the new version. So as always, guys, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.